So you're kind of unusual in a lot of respects. I think a lot of scientists shy away from th these sorts of questions, and and you and maybe uh, P. Z. Myers and uh, Richard Dawkins and a number of other folks have kind of jumped into the fray, and you're you're trying to sort of popularize skepticism in, from a scientific standpoint, which uh, I admire. So well, yeah, we we think that uh, too long uh, religion has been given kind of a free ride, especially in this country. Uh, people of faith, for example, uh, are treated with great respect. Uh, they're consulted by presidents uh, on, on all kinds of issues mm -hmm. as if they had some special Didn't the Reagan, Reagans have an astrologer or something, uh, too? I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, President Obama reads something from, uh, uh, reads a little prayer that a minister provides him every morning. So uh, all these people obviously are relying on, on faith, and yet when you think about it, what is faith? Faith is uh, believing is something for which there is absolutely no evidence, and that's why you call it faith. It's not the same thing as belief. It's uh, uh, a belief is usually based uh, on at least a scientific belief is ba is based on having having evidence for it. But faith is belief uh, is belief based on no evidence, and and uh, our qu our point is how can that that uh, particular point of view? How can looking at things from that angle? Uh, provide any kind of special insight, and so we say we have to dispute it when when people use faith arguments. Sure, sure. Okay. Well, we're we're often asked on the atheist experience questions like, "Who created the universe?" And the question is frustrating to us because it's leading. It's a leading question, right? Mm -hmm. It assumes the form of the answer that that some sort of personality or some sort of entity did that uh, as a conscious act. And the poser, of course, the poser of the question wants an answer that sort of leads to God. So it's yeah. kind of a leading question in that sense. Uh, a better question might be, how did the universe come to be? Now, I'm going to throw you a little curveball. I'm not going to ask about origins yet, but um, I'm going to ask a little di different question. It's, isn't science guilty of doing the same sort of thing in evaluating claims about religion? Isn't, aren't we pre presupposing a natural universe and therefore only looking for gods in the natural universe. And uh, so is science isn't, isn't science assuming its own conclusion here, uh, much like the viewer's question of who created the universe? Well, science uh, deals with observations, measurements that you make with, uh, with accurate uh, instruments, uh, telescopes, uh, microscopes and, and, and so on, but also everyday observations. People don't quite realize that uh, much of what they do every day, when they go to the market and they, they compare items and so on, they, they're, doing, they're look, looking at things in kind of a scientific way uh, because they're looking at numbers, they're looking at, at what they Measuring observe, and, and, they, and, yeah. and, and they observe from their own tastes what's good and what's not, what's not so good, and that gives them a, 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 tends to make them favor one thing or another. So we're all doing, we're all doing science, and that's all that science can deal with is is observations. There is, there is the uh, 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 unwritten assumption. Maybe it's even a written assumption that we only rely on observational data. Now, religion in the past has, has historically uh, believed that there's other other uh, sources of of knowledge, other 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 channels. To knowledge about the universe, in particular, uh, uh, revelation, mm -hmm. and, and and that's true. That's a possible source of, of knowledge, and all that science can do is say, well, what do, do the data say? Now, while we can't tell you what God looks like or, or what his his, his uh, qualities are, uh, we can uh, look at whether there are any observational effects uh, of, of God. Now, the God that most people worship, uh, and that's the God that I talk about in God the Failed Hypothesis, the God that most people worship is, uh, is a God that plays an important role in the universe, created the universe, uh, is responsible for all of its, of its, of its laws, uh, and acts uh, on every uh, atomic Particle which is moving around, and, uh, and of course this listens, listens to every uh, uh, human thought. It's responsible for life appearing when it did, and the type of life we have, and 
and, and so on. So there are this set of, of, of beliefs that are built into those, that particular God belief, the, 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 uh, the God of, of Abraham. Uh, yes, this is the popular notion worship. of God. Yeah. Right? And so, at least in this country and many other countries. And so that's a God that, that I claim is testable. This is what was new uh, uh, about my book, God the Failed Hypothesis, compared to the hundreds of other uh, books that uh, have been out there before then that have said, well, uh, there's no evidence for God. And, uh, and they usually end at that point. They say, well, there's no evidence for God, and, and they show you why there's no evidence for God. But then they stop at that point and say, well, you know, uh, ev absence of evidence isn't evidence for, for absence. Right. And that I, that might I be go, fighting, hiding, I go, right? <laughs> yeah, I go further and say absence of evidence can be evidence for absence under many circumstances. We take absence of evidence as evidence for absence. Uh, I like to use the example of, of somebody reporting uh, seeing elephants in, in Rocky Mountain National Park, not too far from where I live, and, and uh, no one uh, has, has, confirmed it, has confirmed this, and uh, people have looked around, they see no evidence, they, they see no sign, no droppings, no smash grass, and so on that you'd expect with such a large animal roaming around. But I think the fact that you don't, you don't see it uh, uh, doesn't allow you to, to just say, well, it could be, they might still be there hiding someplace. Uh, maybe they are, you know, but with, but, uh, with a very high degree of probability, 99, 99, you know, 0.999%, you can argue beyond a reasonable doubt that uh, there aren't any elephants in Rocky Mountain National Park. And now I think we've reached that same point with respect to this God, not all possible gods, this particular God, that uh, this God should have produced so many observable effects by now, such as prayer mm -hmm. and such as revelation. You know, revelation is something that uh, uh, people say this God uh, 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 possesses uh, the power to do and, and, and does act and does, to do, does pass on certain truths about the universe uh, to the rest of us. Well, that's testable. That's a perfectly testable uh, a claim if if God were to talk to somebody and give them some uh, some tell them some truth about the the world that uh, that person could not possibly have known and that later turns out to be true we find evidence for it then then again you'd have evidence for revelation but that has never happened there's never been uh, a, a claim revelation that has has, pr has proved to be uh, verified and uh, just as there's never been any prayer uh, that has been shown to be, to to be uh, 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 given uh, a positive effect. So, so I think you have to stand by what the data say. Right, right. And I think a lot of people would uh, would, or a lot of theists might respond to you that, well, what about you know the the prayers that get answered, you know, in, in these sort of um, uh, anecdotal stories uh, of here and there uh, mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, I. I I prayed and I found my car keys, or, or these sorts of these sorts of things. Um, and so, what 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 would science say in response to those sorts of questions? Well, you see, anecdotal evidence is is never uh, good scientific evidence because you have to be able to rule out other possibilities. And when you have an anecdote, you don't have enough data to do that. I mean, I've had people come up to me and, and say that uh, they. I, I had a woman do uh, do this to uh, say that. She had uh, predicted uh, uh, from her own uh, thoughts that her son would die in a motorcycle accident, and, and, and he did. Now, my, uh, my answer to that was, well, if my son rode a motorcycle, I would be worried about sure. him uh, being sure. killed in, a, in a motor concern. accident all the time. <laughs> and what you have to do is you have to... You have to say, okay, there is one woman who, whose son rode a motorcycle who's, who, who died. What about all of the times that, that there have been people uh, whose sons have ride, uh, ride motorcycles, who they've, they've worried about, who they dreamt, might have had a dream. Usually it's a dream. They had a dream that the, that the son died, and the son didn't die. You have to take that into account. And then when you add up, that's the thing about anecdotes. When you add up the, the other uh, possible evidence, you find that the anecdote is, 
is, is not sufficient. Uh, you have no way of knowing how, how probable the anecdote uh, uh, is to be, un to be uh, how improbable it is, how yeah, and unlikely people are, are, are it is are really to be bad an actual. At bad at guesstimating probabilities, oh, yeah. right? Well, they, we, anytime we they, <laughs> they see a, uh, a small probability, this is an argument that is throughout the theist literature about, uh, about life being so improbable, about the universe being so improbable, 